Hi everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to model a sci-fi habitat. Now this is a commission uh, I recently completed for Mr. Tom Delaringa. He's a comic book artist uh, behind such titles as Marooned and Tin, and uh, I completed this for an upcoming release of his. Uh, he's given me kind permission to use it as the basis of this tutorial, which is going to cover everything from setting up your real-world unit measurements right through to finished paneling and detailing so that your model is ready for render. So without any further ado, why don't we jump in and get started. What I've got here is the default scene with the cube and we're going to leave this cube here for now. Uh, I've brought in a reference image from the client. There is uh, a room which I'm going to figure out the measurements based on this character sheet. Now the uh, client has told me that this character is about four and a half foot tall and so this room is basically going to be made to fit around her dimensions. Now we've got a very simple square room with some uh, nice beveled edges over here. We've got a door, um, what uh, appears to be a bunk bed, a roughly drawn desk that is extruded from the, the wall, um, reference images that I've been given by the client uh, that I can't show here of course for copyright reasons are from shows like Red Dwarf and the movie Moon and so I'm going to be taking a lot of the aesthetic from those things to really sort of model this out. Um, now this is very very rough so uh, he's basically given me carte blanche to design it as I would um, and then he's just going to basically give me feedback uh, on that stuff. Now the first thing that I have to do before anything else. The client is in America and so the first thing I'm going to do is go over to my properties panel under scene and change my unit presets uh, and this is going to be in the imperial system so I'm going to have to work in feet and inches so that's the unit system is imperial so feet and degrees are my unit measurements and this is going to come in very important because these grid measurements that you see here in Blender on the 3D screen each of those units uh, now are counted as one foot. So uh, let's start by, okay, uh, I'm, I might as well just delete this default cube. and Let's go into front view. Uh, and I'm going to add a shift A mesh a plane. And I'm going to go into my toolbox here uh, so that I can align this to view. Uh, and this is going to be our character. So in my UV image editor that I've got up here, I'm going to go back over to my character sheet and I'm going to go into edit mode here and I'm going to grab that by hitting G, Z to constrain to uh, the Z axis and I'm going to move that up one unit and because each of these units are one foot, I'm going to grab those two vertices up here, hit G again, Z to constrain and we're going to go one, two, uh, and a half. Uh, so let's see here, it's scrolling two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there we go. Now, if you want to see the measurements, you hit the N key to get this uh, properties panel, and under mesh display, you can actually uh, display length information. So if I was to say to say like these two vertices, there we know that the length, or the, in this case, the height of this edge is four and a half feet, or four foot six inches, uh, which is perfect. So first off, we have to assign this object a material. So I'm gonna go into object mode quickly, and I'm gonna create a new material, and I'm gonna call this character ref, and I'm also gonna give it a texture. And the texture should be set to that image or movie, which uh, happens to be that character. Okay, so that means that this will basically map on and we can make this texture called character um, and now in edit mode what we're going to do is we're going to go into textured view and when we hit U to unwrap we see that it actually unwraps uh, along its own X and Y axes which is not what we want and so we can try a couple of things the first that I will try is go project from view and when I click that we get a rectangle uh, that is projected from view, yes indeed, but it's also projected to the dimensions of its viewport. So what we then have to do is just scale this up. So in the UV image editor, let's just make this a little bit yard larger so we can see, and we can see what's going on here in the 3D view. So front view, shift, middle mouse to drag. 
we can, over here in the uh, UV image editor, we go S for scale, and we can scale that up, and then G to grab, and we can bring it around until we can scale it to the proportions of that character, and then get sort of a, a rough, okay, the character's bound in that particular plane, and now we know that that character represents four and a half foot high character that fits in this scene. All right, so I'm going to move this, uh, I'm going to change this uh, UV editor back to our rough plan. So I've got a, a reference here. Okay, so that's been mapped on. So in our 3D view, if we're in anything like textured or a uh, yet yeah, textured view, we should be able to see that character nicely. Now, so she's there, uh, she's a four foot tall character. Now we need a room to fit. And so I'm guessing about 30 by 20 feet should do it. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to add a cube. I might go into wireframe mode for this. Shift A, cube. In edit mode, I'm going to first grab those side vertices by box selecting, that's B, drag a selection around those, and then G to grab, and X to constrain to that um, axis, and then I'm going to drag this out. Now, I do need the lengths on, so I'm just going to go length, and as I drag this out, we're going to make this 30 feet. I'm going to select all, A, A, and I'm going to grab that in the X direction. I'm just going to bring that back so that's centered. Excellent. And then I'm going to select this vertice over here, box select that. Let's drag that in the Y direction so we get uh, 20 feet length. There we go. A, A to select all, Y direction. Let's grab that and let's bring that down. So that's centered. And then one more thing uh, in the front view, that's uh, numpad one, I'm gonna grab that and bring that up one foot. So now that red line represents our baseline and selecting that vertice B to box select, I'm going to grab all of those vertices G, Z to constrain to the Z axis. And I'm gonna make that a 10 foot ceiling. And I think that kind of room uh, should serve our purposes. Now, the reason I started with a cube is because now the beveling is going to work really, really easily. Basically, I can now go into tab, tab into edit mode, select all A, A, hit the W key to bring up my specials menu, and under uh, here it says bevel, and I can click on that and I can just drag until I get a beveled edge and I can even constrain that uh, a little by holding shift or control uh, until maybe I'll oh, that's probably a good enough bevel and we get this lovely kind of a diamond shape uh, box room which is very sci-fi so if we were to go inside this uh, you can see that now this is starting to look like one of those sort of sci-fi rooms okay now we need a couple of things we need a door and we need windows so the best way that I know how to model this is using this cube method again. I think I might start with the door. So going to uh, side view using three, shift A, mesh, plane. Now in the toolbox, T key, I need to align that to view. Uh, let's put that away again. And let's make this door. Let's uh, grab that, bring this up here. Um, again, we're going to have to uh, add, show the mesh display. Now th this edge info is basically per object as you can see. And so we want someone who's about four foot high to be able to enter through here. And so first off, uh, I might snap that to these vertices to this line here. So uh, let's go down to our increment vertex magnet. And if I go G, Z, and then snap it to one of these vertices, now we know that those are very much aligned to those vertices there. And so that means if I grab these, G, Z, and scroll up. Maybe a six foot tall door would be ideal. So we'll just drag that until we get six foot. And maybe we make this, uh, let's go back to increments, unmagnetize G, control to uh, three foot, three and a half foot, maybe. Uh, let, let, let's go for four because it's, it'll be a nice hatch. Right. Grab that in the Y direction and center that. Uh, maybe I might just go snap to grid. Okay, 
So that is the basis of our door. Now, the reason I made this a separate object is because I'm going to uh, bevel these edges and then I want to cut a hole in this wall. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, in um, front view is extrude that maybe uh, a foot, then go to edge, select that edge. And this is a bit of a keyboard mash. If you hold down control, shift, alt, and then click on that edge, you actually get, select the edge ring. And this is a very easy solution to uh, select corners so that we can then go W for the specials, bevel, and bevel that so we get that lovely octagonal shape that's, uh, you know, that's so sci-fi for hatches and click when we're sort of satisfied. Now I'm going to move that GX into position about there. I'm also going to make a window, but the window is going to be a little bit different. Um, instead of making these octagonal, I, I want some nice curved edges, which is going to be a little bit more intensive on the Boolean, but boys are going to look good. So let's open up our transform properties and I'll, you'll see why in a minute. Um, we're going to add another plane, shift A, mesh, plane, uh, align to view. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to grab that. Uh, and maybe we position the window about here. And in vertex select mode, let's make this window about, oh, geez, length, come on. Uh, let's make this window about, yeah, five foot by three foot. That's a nice window. And it's sort of aligned with the top of the door. So everything looks pretty nice. Excellent. Uh, so in top view, extrude out about a foot. And in sort of isometric or even perspective view, go edge, control, shift, alt, select that edge ring. Now, uh, I'm going to go into front view so you can see here. Now, keep uh, an eye on this area on the toolbox, this bottom area. When I go W bevel and I bring that bevel down, when I click, before I go back into object mode, I can actually change some of these parameters. And the parameter that I want to change the most is the segments. So I'm going to go and dial this up about oh, three segments looks good. Four is better, but five is where it's at. Okay, we want these nice rounded edges and you'll see why in a minute. Now, keep in mind that when you change your bevel settings, the next time you go to bevel something, those settings will be repeated. And so if you want to not have that happen, uh, you've got to apply the bevel, change the bevel settings, undo, and then rebevel. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go into object mode because I really like what's going on with that window. And let's move that into position. And then we can have a window on this side over here as well. And maybe we can make it even longer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select both these objects by selecting one, shift selecting the other. And I'm going to go control J and this joins those meshes together. Now in edit mode, I'm going to make sure I'm in vertex select mode and my window, I'm going to select one of these vertices and while my mouse is hovering close to the window, I'm going to hit L to select linked. Okay, doesn't select the door, it only selects the window because I'm going to duplicate this and make another window on this edge. So I'm going to go shift D to duplicate. Uh, let's bring this down here. We're going to rotate in the Z direction by hitting R, Z, 90 degrees. And we're going to position this about here. We want that centered. So let's see if we go into vertex mode. Is this kind of centered? Yes, it is. And I want to make this window a little bit larger. So I'm going to grab those vertices here. I'm going to bring this out a couple more feet on that direction and a couple more feet in this direction. Uh, that's about right. Now let's make it a 10 foot window exactly. So now we've got two objects and we need to create a Boolean operation so that we can cut these shapes out of this shape. We want to subtract this shape from this shape. So we select that first, then we shift select the room and under bool tools, we hit subtract. And now what we've got here is something that we've got actually these window shapes inside, which we can actually get rid of. Um, but We've created a Boolean operation that has given us a mesh that is quite nice. And so let's just take the measurements off for a second. And so I can select this edge ring here, 
select the vertices and delete those. You can select this edge ring here and that edge ring here, select the vertices and uh, delete that. So now if we take that original object, which is still there, and we move that to another layer, so let's go M2, now we can see that we've cut these very neat holes out of this very basic shape. Now there's a little bit of cleanup to do, okay, so there's a few extra vertices. Oh wow, look at that. Um, maybe it's better if this particular door was a little higher. And so what I might do is very quickly undo this until we haven't had the Boolean operation. I'm going to grab this door in side view uh, and let's bring that up maybe about three and a half inches. Okay. Oh, hello. This window is not set to the height that we wanted, which is there. Okay, so why don't we get that window on that height as well? Yep, that's about right. Okay, and let, let's just do that operation again. So select that, shift select that, uh, bull tools, where are you? Subtract, and move that to layer two, and then just do a little bit of cleanup. Get the length off there. One, two, three, delete. And there's our room. Excellent. All right, so then, then the next port of call, obviously, is a few details uh, in this particular room. Now, in order to get these details, the first thing I'd better do is maybe remove this roof by separating it because we will need it again later on. Uh, and then I can select that roof. Let's move that to layer two so that we can take a look inside. Uh, we probably don't need this character until then, too. So let's move that to layer two as well. So the first thing I want to do is go into edit mode in the room and I'm going to try to put a loop cut in here. Uh, yeah, this should give me the information I need. I'm just going to click there and I'm going to duplicate those vertices that were created. Shift D, click and P to separate, out, separate those out. Right, so this is going to be the profile of the room uh, to create a nice type of divider that's a sort of a bit of a sci-fi type thing. So I might go ahead and speed up the process here uh, just a little bit so that uh, we can uh, get to where we want to be as quickly as possible. Uh, so excuse me while I, I, I uh, go ahead and model this divider. Basically all the same techniques as before, nothing too special. <laughs> Now the reason I duplicated this out is because this bed is basically going to be extruded from this uh, and so it's going to butt up right up against this and so the first thing we do is we go to edit mode, vertices and we're going to extrude out something that is, maybe we do length on this because we need some definite lengths here and so what have we got here? We've got a 10 foot cubby and so if we bring that right up against there, that means we get about a foot in from this, and a foot in from that it gives us nine feet, which should give us enough room to carve out two bunks, and we definitely need oh yeah, three feet in, uh, so that works really, really well. And then we've got something that kind of goes along the shape of this, which we don't exactly need because then it's really difficult to get into the bunk bed, and so we're going to bring that all the way in. So that's maybe, yeah, it's a little bit of a an edge. And maybe we bring this down to snap with that particular um, corner there. 
so that we can measure up from there. So that's that's quite nice. And we could probably do the same uh, with this edge here, just to get a little consistency in the room. It doesn't have to fit perfectly with this divider, but it sort of has to fit in with the room aesthetic, uh, as it were. And then uh, we could probably just bring this back a little as well. Um, so it's like a bit of an overhang. Okay, and we don't really have to worry about this stuff sort of sticking out of the room because it's not going to be seen. Uh, all right, so next we need to cut out these little cubbies uh, for the, the bed. So we definitely need two rows. And the way I did that is I go Control R, loop cut, and then I hit numeral two before I commit the cut. And then I click again to commit that. Now in front view, what we want to do is we want this to go up to maybe about, it doesn't have to be exact, um, but it sort of has to look at seven and a half foot for a, a, a cubby there. And we want the bunks, bunks to sort of be two foot high. What do you like? Yeah, it kind of has to look a bit uh, cramped, I guess. And so let's bring this down to about two and a half feet in length, so 2.6. Let's make another one, but let's leave some room here. So if we went up from here about maybe one foot and we make that another 2.6. Uh, he said he wanted some cupboards up there. So this should give us two cubby holes, which should look pretty nice. And so I'm going to remove these faces, not extrude them just yet, because we want these little um, sci-fi kind of 45 degree angle corners, which I'm, I'm growing very fond of. Uh, modeling. Uh, so excuse me while I go ahead and speed up the process here. All right, so basically I've made these two loop cuts six inches so we get a nice 45 degree and that uh, by filling in those triangle faces, again, you know, we're modeling for comics. We're not modeling for perfect topology here. That's where we can get away with a few cheats. So we select those edge rings in top view, wireframe, so we can see what uh, edge lengths we get. We extrude Y and we extrude that back, not exactly three feet because otherwise it's going to come up against the wall. So let's make it about... 2.8 and then that should give us some nice cubby holes and uh, then we can select this edge ring here by just going shift alt select one of those edges f for face select that one shift alt select that edge f for face and now we've got our basic bunk cubby which is really really great uh, and then just as a finishing touch Let's select this edge loop and this edge loop, and let's put a little bit of a bevel on that. And there we get our really nice bevel there on the bunks. Uh, and so now we can, in uh, wireframe mode, uh, we can probably push these over a little bit uh, now. So let's select all of these vertices and let's bring that more into the room, uh, just a little bit, and then maybe bring these over to the divider so that in uh, in room view okay we've got this is a little bit of a problem um, so maybe to make that go away we can bring this divider out a little bit more so let's select those vertices there uh, are they all the ones that we need i think so and let's make that divider stick out maybe another six inches let's see what that looks like Okay, then that sort of covers that area. Perfect, we don't need that because we want to duplicate this one. This is now the standard. And now what we need is a, a desk area, uh, a sink. I'm going to go ahead and speed up again to build that desk and a sink. It's basically very boring uh, extrusions and bevels and stuff like that. Uh, but you can sort of see the process as we go. So let's, let's begin. <laughs>
Okay, so before I get into the final details for this, I'm going to show you a couple more uh, things that you might find a bit handy, and that is uh, I'm going to model this door. I've gone ahead and just extruded out uh, this edge here about a foot back, and so now I can take that edge and I can duplicate those uh, vertices, Shift D to duplicate, click, and P to separate that selection. So now I've got this, uh, this nice uh, door panel that I can uh, work with. And so if we take a look at all the vertices, so first thing I'm going to do is maybe dissolve these vertices, fill in the face, F, and then do an inset with I. This is the cleanest way to get some really good uh, edges. And then we can uh, build some uh, detail based on this, this door design that I'm, I'm looking at. If you're splitting between, say, a straight edge and an, uh, an angled edge, so if you go Control R, you'll see that it does the, the it splits the difference. But after you click, right, you still have a little bit of leeway. If you hit E and then F, what that does, you see the little red dot that appears? It says it's going to copy the edge where that red dot is. And so here it will mirror the bottom edge right here. Uh, and if I hit F again, uh, it will mirror the top edge, which is the straight edge. And that, that's sort of what I want. And so uh, with that, uh, selected, we've snapped that to the right increment, uh, so that's going to be for the door. Again, we're going to split some loops here, and we'll make that, so we're going to go down at 45 degree, and down again, so we'll need another part here. And so now what the pattern is going to do is something along these lines. So we've got this inside border. So I'm going to use my knife tool to basically just rough out the border. So we don't really need to be uh, snapping to anything just yet. But uh, in a moment, we will probably get to where we need to go. So let's, let's rough out that. And now what we can do is we can do things like snap to vertice to get it spot on. So let's grab in the Y direction, snap it to that vertice, and in the Z direction, snap it to that one. That's a pretty good angle. Use the knife tool here to go pop, 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 pop. So if we then snap that to that, snap that to that, and now we can sort of this is really needs to be, this is going to be a little bit eyeballed, unfortunately, but uh, I think it's going to turn out, okay, so we don't need, uh, we can dissolve that edge. We do need to flip it, so maybe what we can do is split the door in half this way, and then just, and now we can uh, get a little bit of a door handle area uh, etched in here as well. Let's go one, two, and we can go something like, three, four, five. Okay, so everything's not perfectly even, so let's just even those things out just by snapping to vertice on a couple of things. And that one doesn't quite need to be that far in because we just want it for the door handle. So we've got this nice pattern here. Yep, that's looking quite nice. Uh, if we bring that up that far, that should look quite a little bit nicer. Uh, okay, so why don't we go ahead and get rid of all of these vertices and if we just snap our cursor to select it here and we make that origin by origin to 3D cursor and now let's see what happens when we stick a mirror modifier on that and we go down to the Z direction. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit off but uh, it's not unfixable. Okay, so let's look inside the room and let's get some, okay, what we want to do is center view to cursor so that now we can sort of pivot around that. Excellent. So now we've got a couple of faces that we can select. Very nice. And we can just extrude them slightly so that we can get a bit of a, a paneling uh, going there. I think we're going to extrude it in this direction ever so slightly. And then we're going to select those edge loops and we're going to bevel them in a little. 
Uh, we might do a second bevel and then we can grab those and just sort of push them right up close. So it's just, see, we can see in the mirror how, how good it's looking. Uh, yep, yeah, that's, that's looking really nice. So what I'm going to do is uh, in wireframe mode, I'm going to apply that mirror modifier and then I'm going to grab all of my vertices down here and I'm going to shift them up ever so slightly so we get our door that is uh, perfectly in line. Excellent. So now let's bring that door forward a little bit in that space and to really sell this, uh, I'm going to add a couple more um, details. So first of all, we need to select this outer edge ring, extrude uh, a little in the X direction and then bevel this edge. Right, so come on, where, where's, where's our bevel? Here we go. Bevel this edge. So now we look as though it, it sort of uh, does like a, a seal against the door and we've got this nice, nice little inset in there. Uh, we obviously have to bevel this edge also. So let's, uh, let's select that. And should we go along with that soft idea? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's just get a cursor to selected. And in side view, let's just put in a little uh, detail uh, of some sort of a, a door handle here. So we'll just use a square. Extrude out a little. And then we can maybe bevel this in. there okay and that is looking fantastic okay so sci-fi paneling why don't we use a simple wall and then I will do the sci-fi paneling on everything else uh, other than that so the first thing we need of course is to duplicate this shape and so the easiest way to do this is possibly just to select these edges here let's duplicate those edges P to separate and in front view, let's oh, actually in top view because we need to know where this is, this is going to sit. Let's move this over to about here and we'll extrude all the way over to there. And so now we've got a wall within a wall, right? It's going to show up a little bit odd here and so before we do anything just to sort of give you an idea of what that's going to look like I'm going to throw in a solidify modifier so that it pokes out a little bit from the wall and we're gonna maybe uh, so we have to type mil there don't we so let's go 240 mil and it's poking in into the room let's let's see uh, yeah if, if I dial that up let's let's make it about one and one and one quarter inch. Let's go one point one two five inches, and so now we can actually see that uh, that is solidifying into the room. So if we do anything to it, that solidify modifier is basically going to um, work really really well. Now I'm going to show you that the simplest way to get some nice square edges uh, or some uh, forty five degree angle edges. Uh, to, to go along with the rest of our motif. So first off, let's go Control R and let's dial in two so we get three panels across and then Control R in the horizontal and let's dial in three. Yeah, why not? Um, and let's say that we're going to get a 45 degree angle here and here. So we get a piece that sort of comes out like that and then some additional panels uh, in there. So let's put in an extra loop over here, throw in an extra loop over here for our 45 degree angles, and in front view we need to make sure that these edges are um, the correct lengths. So let's see now, what have we got? If we select this edge loop and we bring that in, let, let's go for our, let's make this a 5 inch exactly, so we'll have a 5 inch and then in the Z direction, make sure that that is at five inches as well. So we've got one corner nicely set up there. And then uh, let's 
make sure that this is five inches as well. Five inches, excellent. Now in vertex mode, we can then go K knife tool and bring in one cut there and one cut there. Okay, so next what we wanna do is we wanna separate out panels that are going to uh, look about right. Now the first thing is along the bottom and along the top, I like to do some uh, different details. So the first thing we could do is separate out the top and the bottom all together, uh, and we can use those as a, a at a different time. Now the first panel is this big one here, which we want to make this 45 degree angle panel there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to hit P to separate. Okay, so it looks like it's disappeared. It hasn't. Uh, and then we grab these faces over here. We hit P to separate. I'm going to make this a separate panel. This a separate panel again. And then this one, so they get a bit of a mirroring type thing. Now we can do a, a panel over here, right? Uh, this one, let's split that. And let's go into face select mode again. P to separate, P to separate. And then we can go maybe that whole panel there. This panel here, uh, this can go all the way to the floor. And then that panel there is the last of it, actually. So with all of those panels selected still, what we want to do is we want to set origin to geometry. And so all of those panels should have their origin set to the geometry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scale them in. But first, we have to change our pivot to individual origins. So then we can scale in ever so slightly so we can get a bit of a gap. And maybe it's a, yeah, we, we sort of, it, it's an arbitrary figure, but we just want a little bit of gap. Then we join up those panels again. So this solidify is still on there. And now what we've got is some really nice wall paneling. Uh, and all we need to do is maybe add a bevel modifier, which is different from adding bevel, which you could do also. Uh, so let's make this uh, angle depth there. You're generally the settings I like to use. Uh, and then just sort of bring that right back until it just gives us a nice looking bevel on, on the edge. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, not really liking what's going on here. So maybe in the solidify, okay, we need high quality, even thickness, the creases have to be set. Look, that will do for now because the bevel only has to be quite simple. And that's basically how you do sci-fi paneling. So the next thing I'm going to do is, of course, I'm just going to go ahead and panel the rest of these walls above and below uh, and then show you the finished Product. Now I've got the finished design. It's taken a, a couple of hours to get all the paneling in there, but uh, as you can see, it's looking really nice. And uh, you know, we've got uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got these these lovely bunk beds. We've got a couple of window spaces here, which were really good. The the hatch door is looking really cool, and the desk area and the sink area are all there. And we've got this lovely paneling going right round. And uh, with a little bit of texturing, we could probably put some emission shaders, say, up here or on these top panels up here. Oh, our character's right in view there. Um, but we've got some, uh, let's see here, we've got some detailing such as these patterns over here that repeat above the bed there. Uh, and you can also see that uh, it's... Yeah, look, I'm, I'm really proud of this, uh, but like like I said, it's, it's off to the clients. But uh, yeah, look, I hope you get a little bit out of the techniques that I showed in this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again um, in a few weeks.